welcome to Ian and Friends OTB. That is Ian and Friends on the bike. That's right, after countless months of video calls, we're over it. We're gonna take our show on the road and bring you all of our Ian and Friends content from our bike rides around Austin, Texas and beyond. Sit back and enjoy INF OTB. Michael, as predicted, the Namir World Cup did not disappoint. It was sloppy, it was wet, it wasn't the crazy mud fest we saw last year, but it's Belgium. And of course it was just wet enough to make for difficult, brutal conditions out there. Let's start with the elite women. Right off the start, we saw former Namur winner Evie Richards running up the hill with her bike like on top of her head. She was completely tangled up, ended up moving back into the, or right near the top 10 by the start of the first lap. But it was Katya Vass and Denise Betsema who really strung the race out right from the start. The pace was a little bit too hot for Katya Vass though who ended up crashing on this technical downhill where we saw a number of women sliding into the barriers or just toppling right over the bars. Betsimo was riding by herself through the end of the first lap until Lucinda Brand ended up tracking her down and shortly passing her. Brand was pretty much gone from that point on, but about 30 seconds behind was the American champion, Clara Hansiger who had a brilliant third lap, moving from a group containing Evie Richards and a number of other top contenders, all the way up to Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, past the world champion, and right onto Denise Betsema's wheel, setting up a dramatic battle in the second half of this race for the second place spot. Hansinger and Betsema went back and forth, Betsema putting a pass on Hansinger and that technical run down onto the cobbles. Um, kind of a cheeky move there, cutting off Hansinger, but Hansinger was right back around her up the hill and eventually distancing Betsema and finishing second to Lucinda Brand, the most dominant rider in the world right now in the elite women's field. A huge victory for the American national champion and really confirmation of what she achieved in Namira last year, finishing sixth place. Michael, what do you think of this race? And what does this mean for the third round of the World Cup, Dendermonde, coming up this Sunday, live and on demand, on Flow Bikes, of course. Lucinda Brand, as you said, she is just the dominant force this year. That, of course, begs the question, is she going to be able to keep it going all the way to the World Championships? Right now, she has, is showing absolutely no signs of slowing down. I think the big takeaway, though, of course, is the ride of Clara Hansinger. Michael, I did have the pleasure of speaking with Clara Hansinger right before Namur. And it was really interesting, you know, especially combined with her post-race comments, she was feeling the pressure and she ended up rising to the expectation and executing at Namir. You know, she is from the Northwest and she said she thrives on these muddy, rooty, technical courses. Um, they would be described in the cross world as heavy courses, rocks, roots. It's what she's familiar with coming up in the sport um, racing collegiate cycle cross and going on to become the national champion. Let's not forget that she won her national championships on a heavy, muddy, rooty, rocky course in the Northwest in 2019. But what impressed me most about Hansinger was the execution, the poise. She had a good start, but not the best start. You know, she was still in, you know, 14th place, about a half lap in, and she did lose those 30 seconds because of her start right off the bat, which she never fully was able to make up on Brand. By the time she got to the front of the race, Brand was long gone. Hansinger told me that what she really needs to work on is fast, twisty, technical courses. And it looks like that's what we'll be seeing in Dendermonde. I mean, this is a somewhat urban, flat, fast track in Dendermonde where we might see, you know, pack style racing, attacks it's not going to be a grinded out type of race like we saw in Namur and that's going to be the real challenge for Hansinger if she can diversify her skill set and not only excel on courses like Namur but excel across all different types of terrain. Let's listen to Clara Hansinger's interview from after the Namur World Cup. I just love this interview. Only half a minute behind uh, Lucinda Brandt this is a very very important performance for you I guess. Yeah, it came with a lot of pressure on it. I had a good result last weekend at Gabre and 
people were recognizing the similarities between that race and this, and I was definitely getting a lot of messages about doing well here. And so that actually come off and execute a good race and get my first second at a World Cup is really significant. It's been a while that we have an American woman on, on top of uh, the ranking. So Not are you long. the successor now of Katie Compton? Katie Compton was podium at World Cups only like a season ago, and it's been a weird season. It feels like I'm uh, following in the ruts that my predecessors have set up for me. They're still out there doing excellent racing, and I want to do my best to be up here with them. Yeah, your first off camber of the day wasn't that good, but then afterwards you really mastered it and you made the difference in the climbing. Yeah, I definitely have a lot of power when it comes to getting up the hills. I'm still trying to get that speed and the technique, but it, uh, the conditions of this race seem to play pretty well to my uh, riding style. Matthew Vanderpool not too happy with the downhill section before the cobbles. And we're underway now. Vanderpool and Pitcock have to hope that they get a little bit of a gap so they can get through. Vanderpool already looking good. There he goes into the wheels. Pitcock's got not too bad a start as well. And now it funnels in and there's a little bit of bumping. A few riders having some issues right on the front. Van Turen out in the leader's jersey. Van der Poel takes a bike. Van Aert takes a bike. Pitcock is going to take a bike this time safely. And for the first time, Van Aert goes to the front. And Pidcock gets himself in on the wheels. Van der Poel is there. The three best cyclocross riders in the world are now at the front. When that last lap came along, him combined with Matthew Van der Poel pulled back Tom Pidcock. And Matthew Van der Poel then did what everybody, including Wad Van Aert, kind of expected him to do. Matthew Vanderpool produced just a last lap that nobody else could match. Wout Van Aert in his post-race interview said that, you know, maybe he focused too much on trying to ride himself back into the race, get on terms with Tom Pitcock, and didn't focus enough on Matthew Vanderpool. He admitted that Vanderpool just has a last lap like no one else, and he probably should have hedged his uh, bets a little bit to stay with Vanderpool. But well, whatever the case, those three riders were just riding flat out on the last lap. Vanderpoel came across the line, a couple seconds to spare over Wout Van Aert, making this the fifth victory at Namur in the last six years. Pretty incredible statistic from Vanderpoel. Tom Pitcock, he is showing that he is a true, true force more than ever in the uh, elite cycle cross scene though, and what that means for the men's season coming up. Ian, I think that what we're seeing is more parity across the top five riders in the men's cyclocross field than we have seen since Matthew Vanderpool won his first world championship, I would go so far as to say. Yeah, Michael, we can't forget to mention that the World Cup Series leader, Michael Van Turnout, was right up in the mix moments before the finale kicked off. He couldn't hold the pace in the final lap or so, but he definitely showed the strength and on a course maybe that's not as demanding as Demir, it'll be interesting to see what Van Turnout can do. And we also can't forget about Eli Izerbeck. You know, this is a rider who has been a dominant force, the European champion, and he had the unfortunate of breaking his chain right off the start. That might end up coming back to be a blessing in disguise. Sure, he's maybe out of the World Cup Series overall running, but this Namur course was so taxing and we have two World Cup races coming up the next two re weekends with Thunder Monday and Holst. To me, Namur is essentially akin to doing a seven hour monument, what it took out of these riders and you could see it on Vanderpool's face at the finish. You know, will that fitness end up coming around and paying off or will they start to fade here towards the end of the Christmas block? <laughs>